Hiding from the light. Conventional wisdom. Where are they holding these conventions? And who are the keynote speakers? How much do they charge for a ticket? And what does the ticket price cover? What's the purpose of these conventions? And why do these conventions exist? What's their mission statement and target audience? When are these conventions held? Where do these people get their logic? Do they read books and watch documentaries? Who's controlling the people? And to what end are they controlling them? And will we ever find out the answers? You are what you eat. You are what you eat, and if you eat meat and keep eating it, you're an idiot. I don't mean that too harshly. I used to smoke cigarettes before I turned my life around. You can talk about taste, and I'm sure you will, or you can rationalise the way your dinner is killed in concentration camps, but the truth will out eventually. But don't you feel silly putting something inside your body that wants to kill it? I get annoyed enough just thinking about my tax money. I'm creating jobs and boosting the economy, but I give 20% to the government to pay for your health care. I pay for roads I don't drive on, warfare I don't believe in, life-saving operations on people who stuff themselves silly eating fucked up meat from a factory farm or cutting their own throats slowly with another kebab from the kebab van. People are killing themselves and I'm footing the bill. And people say, where's your empathy? And I reply, well, where in the hell was theirs? On being vegan. Eat meat, they said. It'll be fun, they said. And now you're fat and you're dead and you're dying. People seem to think they can't control their stomachs, which perhaps they can't, but I don't find it difficult not to kill animals. I think you do you and I'll do me, but I also think you doing you is killing the planet. I don't know, man. I don't sleep at night, but my conscience is clear. Even cheese and milk and eggs are inhumane, at least most of the time. And the biggest surprise is the community. I should have guessed it was there, but I didn't. It's just a shame people seem so intent on attacking them. Advice for new writers. Write something new every day and read something new too while you're at it. Hone your creativity through cooking and painting or whatever the hell else you think you're good at. Have one good friend and one good enemy. Pay more attention to feedback from your enemy. Learn to not use alcohol as a crutch of sorts. It's not a good crutch and will let you down. Other than that, just have fun and enjoy. It's a roller coaster ride, but it's worth it. Make your voice heard and make it mean something. Blind Bitter Blind Bitter biting badly, burned butter, big buildings better built before birth. Bastard brothers breaking bread before being briefly badgered because bored babies by Blind Bitter biting badly. Brilliant beauty being bearable by borrowing Brian Bilston's book beside Borders Bright Borders, but bad bibliophiles buy backwards before bribing Blind Bitter biting badly. Beetles beat Beetles because Beetles bleed blue, but Beetles bleed bright blood by being brilliant bassists, basically being broken by Belgian burglars because Belgian burglars beat both Beetles by brewing Blind Bitter biting badly. Biting badly blind bitter barrel bottoms before bread blames beer by being bloated brown. Burning big bad burps brought by blind bitter biting badly. Bite big baby boy. Bite big bad boring blind bitter biting badly. Sticky situations. I got myself into another sticky situation. Nothing major, just another open mic night. Another girl, another kiss, another hangover. It's not my fault she plays guitar, writes her own songs, knows the Brian Jonestown Massacre and Tess Parks, makes art and reads Bukowski. She's basically me but better looking. Then I woke up still drunk and sat behind the wheel of a car, my first time ever in the driving seat. I'm 29 years old, neither young nor middle aged and I'm not quite sure what's happening to me. What a privilege. So I'm sitting down, keys on my keyboard, alphabetic, so forgive me if I was in such zeal, so I can't help it, I don't look at the keyboard much. Eating caramelised onion hummus, more commonly spelled hummus, but for dictionary.reverso.net, the top six French examples have hummus one third of the time, and hummus two thirds of the time, with expensive breadsticks that I only bought because the plastic in the box is recyclable, and even that is a lie. Australia's on fire, but I had to check. Searched, is Australia still on fire on Ecosia or my internet collapse? But at least their Prime Minister's back. Buddy Holly, Charles Hardlin Holly, according to Wikipedia. I didn't donate, I tried to plant some trees. Crashed into a cornfield and now a young man, younger than my father, is reliving him. And how can I dance in the face of death? I'm fucking terrified. It's like a barbecue in a zombie apocalypse. I'm eating hummus instead of stopping the barbecue and maybe the zombies. 
And Dave is a transphobe, probably, maybe. It's not my fight, so I'm the same problem again. He said some things I disagree with, but fuck it, it's Christmas. Bellens on horses. I don't even agree with riding horses. Chasing foxes. Everyone's so angry. Eating turkey, stroking cats, walking dogs, or smoking weed against the law too, you fucking hypocrite. Myself included, apart from the turkey. And there's a woman in France I've fallen in love with. I try to learn her language, but I'm scared. She always sees the best in me. And I know at my best, I guess I'm a good boy. But when I'm at my worst, I feel like I'm nothing. And what's the point anyway? She can't save everyone, and she sees the bad in them too. I see the good in people, and I see the bad in people, but I can't weigh one against the other. Either everything is fine or nothing is. I'm not going to kill myself, but I know how to tie a noose. Surely everyone does. But then, I think everyone can tie a tie. What a privilege to live my life. I mean, I'll die when you die anyway. Mon Dieu sans valeur est l'enfant de mon. What a privilege to live my life. Inspire me. Inspire me like I want you to inspire me. Build me up, don't break me down. The cracks are showing and you don't want to get caught in the crossfire. I mean to say, there's a war underway and you have to choose a side. You need to be your own inspiration. You should listen as the owls raise their voices. They raise their voices for you. Making it out alive. It's only just the end of everything, as though the sun winked out and turned its back on us. In fact, you might even say, our unhappy world is here to kill us. I won't survive it, but nor will you. We test ourselves by throwing the odds and watching television. Anything for an easy life, even suicide. My friend Todd has a book that he didn't write, but someone else used the inside cover to say goodbye. They didn't make it out alive either. The 1010 to London Marlebone. Don't let me die on the 1010 to London Marlebone. I know I look suspicious, but there's no bomb in my case, only clothes, and I struggle to stay awake at the best of times. Don't let me die on two hours sleep in the middle of my third cup of coffee. Don't let me die in the foyer, surrounded by the stench of meat and commuters' bacon baps. It reminds me that human flesh tastes like chicken with a little seasoning. Don't let me die on the platform. Don't push me beyond the yellow line. I will not go gentle into that good night. Don't let me die on the railway line, somewhere between Banbury and Bicester North. My to-do list is longer than your novel, and besides, I have a driving lesson. Don't let me die on the road, either. Neil Cassidy gave up by the railway tracks with a damaged liver, but it beats being hit by a golf buggy. Don't give me a diagnosis, just give me a good night's sleep. Let me lie in the arms of the woman I love, because when I'm with her, I think I could live forever. Critics Critics always say, mate, they say things behind your back. They niggle those little insecurities. They hold up a mirror and I look homeless. I am. I've only got food and shelter. I've got nothing to hide but my pride. But shit, it feels good to get a poem out. Funny though, I can write like eyes like lighthouses, but I'm lost for words now. I'm a writer, right? Wrong. I just scrape a living. Pandemic. Okay, very funny. There's no need to cause a pandemic. Although it's true, I ought to wash my hands more. It's April and the clocks have changed, but I only go outside in emergencies. What else is new? Still, it's a shame. I only just got over my social anxiety. A girl broke my heart again. I was looking forward to meeting new people. And it's also a shame people are dying. Me? I've never felt more connected, more human. I've never been more homo and less robotic. I guess I mean this year is only a curveball. It's not going how I wanted, but I can deal with it. And if I can help someone else, even better. And oh yes, in the meantime, there are books for reading and writing. Water. Water pouring from the sky and swirling down drains into the sewers, clown infested and flushed away like rats in a plague house. Wet hair hanging over hangovers, getting in your eyes and in your mouth. Wet cat hair, somehow getting everywhere. I sometimes think my cat is trying to kill me. Frozen water slipped between pavement cracks, hanging icicle shaped when the gritters are out. Hydrogenated gases swirling in foreign atmospheres, not enough to support life, but enough to supply the hope of it. Like when you wash the crap from your eyes on some unenchanted morning while the kettle boils. Water turned to milk and poured from coconuts. Milk-faced kids wearing t-shirts saying, you're not a baby cow, bro, you're a human being. Recycled water in international space stations, sweat leaking in and out of armpits. Tears raining down like a waterfall. Technicolor echoes. He barely knew me, maybe not at all, and I didn't know him the way I should have. Met a few times under hazy lights at Wickham Arts Centre. He retweeted us like there was no tomorrow. I was looking forward to seeing him again. 
I have this theory of colour. It's not about race and reflects vitality. There are colourful people turning heads when they walk into rooms. I collect them like butterflies but without the cruelty. Lionel, you lit up the room when you were in it. Your words had power and still have it. Your name conjures the face which conjures the magic. You were a brother in arms fighting the good fight for a better world. A world you believed in but will never see and I wonder what you would have made of life after Covid. Something beautiful, no doubt. An opportunity to reshape society into something better. And now I know we owe it to you to make that happen. When I think of you, I don't see sadness, just love and compassion and understanding. They say a man isn't gone until the echoes he left fade away, and so you haven't gone nowhere, you've gone somewhere. The echoes have colour, a legacy of synesthesia. The echoes are strong and getting stronger.